morning, everyone, and welcome to Urban Update. I am Alberto Vasari. And on the show this morning, Boston's newest attraction, the Dreamland Wax Museum, has opened its doors, and we'll give you the cool details on that later in the show. Also, restaurant owner and well-known local businessman Nick Verano joins us this morning to chat a little about, about his interesting personal and professional journey. And we'll introduce you to a couple of architects who are active participants in the ongoing transformation of Boston skyline. But up first, this past summer has been one to highlight rising racial tensions in the United States. Now, the racial violence witnessed in Charlottesville, Virginia last month rocked the nation, but it also disclosed that while some racial progress has been made in this country, significant progress still must be made. Now, two weeks ago, Bostonians showed that they were ready and prepared to march against hate speech. But are we ready to make the profound commitments needed to end structural and systematic racism in our city? Now, while other cities are bringing down monuments that represent the old Confederacy, is Boston poised to have serious conversations on race that include renaming Faneuil Hall because of its ties to slavery? What are, we make, what are we to make of all this? My guest this morning is New Democracy Coalition founder Kevin Peterson. The organization focuses on civic literacy, civic policy, and electoral justice. He also writes for the Boston Herald. Good morning. Good morning. Glad nice to, to be here. Yeah. 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 I'm going to start right off the bat. You wrote a letter to Marty Walsh. That's right. I, got, I have a copy of it, mm -hmm. asking him to rename Faneuil Hall. Why? Uh, because uh, to do so would reflect uh, a deep respect for our democracy. Uh, in terms of telling the full story of uh, this city and, and this nation. We celebrate uh, Faneuil Hall all the time. We should continue to celebrate it. Uh, but there, are, there is a legacy of slavery connected to it. And we should um, respect that legacy by uh, reconceptualizing, retextualizing that building. Um, uh, the building has been called the Cradle of Liberty. We should also recognize it as a place that, uh, that was built on a legacy of harm and pain to other human beings. Now, I saw the letter. That was, that was dated way before Charlottesville and yes. kind of all this was, was starting off. So yes. you're kind of bringing it back up because uh, did you get a response? Have not got a response from, from Mayor Walsh. I'm looking forward to getting a, a response from him. I, uh, if Mayor Walsh has um, couched his, um, his administration as one that will look at racial issues and that one that would uh, create racial dialogues. I think this is a good opportunity, an excellent opportunity for the, for the mayor to um, instigate, so to speak, um, conversations about uh, race and uh, legacy and how Boston, uh, sadly, was built on the, um, on the work and the efforts and the sale of slaves. What, what, what would you be a, uh, your, your assessment of the racial tone of the country today? We've had this conversation before, but yeah. as of right now, give me a pulse. Dour, depressing, uh, in need of a national response, part of which is, um, is uh, dialogue, uh, but another part of the answer is, um, uh, quite frankly, presidential leadership. Uh, I think we have a president in office right now uh, who is insensitive to the uh, the um, condition of our uh, country racially. He started, remember, Alberto, his campaign talking about Latinos and 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 what a a burden they were uh, they are on the country. That's not true, uh, but he set the tone uh, throughout his presidential campaign and up until uh, today, quite frankly, uh, where. Uh, we're um, finding ourselves in deeper racial turmoil than we can remember. Uh, we, we, uh, the Gallup poll issued um, a, a finding just weeks ago that stated that the black and white relations are worse than the riots. Uh, the Rodney King riots in 1990, 1992. And yet, you know, obviously you're old enough to remember that, so yes. you kind of coincide with that, yes. with that opinion? Uh, I do. I do. I think we're, um, we're uh, drifting apart in terms of our ability to engage each other, uh, engage our mutual history so that we move forward. So uh, lots been talked about, too. Yaki Way is another yeah. one. Um, but President Trump did bring up a legitimate question is, um, when do you stop removing these statues and, cha and changing the names of parks or buildings? I mean, up, up to when? You know, our, our founding fathers were mostly all slaveholders, right? That, that, that's right. Um, most of them, a majority of them, uh, certainly George Washington and, and, and Thomas Jefferson. So you don't, you don't um, um, bring down all, your, all the monuments. Um, you bring down some of them, many of them. I don't think you need 1,500 monuments to Robert E. Lee across the country. That's how many that there, there are. But you bring down some of those monuments because you make a very important symbolic point. And the, and the symbolism is embedded in the fact that we're going to be committed to truth 
uh, in, in our democracy. So you, so renaming uh, Faneuil Hall to Christmas Attics Hall, for, for, for example, is a great act of uh, symbolism and truth-telling that we all can engage in, black, white, and other races. Where can someone find a copy of the letter? Because in the letter, you were very eloquent and very respectful. Um, I thought it was, I mean, I think it spoke well, and we couldn't get to all of it, but uh, can people get a copy of that? You can go to uh, new democ the new democracy org, a copy of the letter there, or you can sign on to my Facebook. It's sitting right there. And uh, you've got uh, something for uh, Harvey. I want to put that up. Uh, you've got uh, uh, kind of a, a fundraising efforts going on? It's also about our ongoing sort of racial conversations. Remember how poorly we responded uh, to low-income and black communities after and during Katrina, 12 years ago this week, in fact. Um, we want to be sure 30 percent of the uh, population in uh, Houston uh, is African American. Most of them, a great deal of them, are, are, are poor in the poor sections of. So you have of, this, of, and I've got. Uh, we've had so on, so on this uh, Sunday and Monday. At 61 Columbia Road, uh, we are accepting donations, working with the Red Cross. Today and uh, tomorrow. Uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, um, accepting donations, and we're going to get them to the Red Cross and get them to, um, to uh, those victims of Harvey. Thank you for coming by. You know, I called you last minute, and I wanted you in to start the show off. Thank you for having me. All right, Kevin. Mm -hmm. All right, stay right there, because when we come back, the man behind great restaurants around town, such as Strager Waterfront, Strip, Nico, and a few others you might know. So Nick Morano joins us in just a few right here on Urban Update.